Hi there everyone, another huge three points for Celtic on the road to the title. We now need a maximum of seven points to become champions again. It's probably six when you factor in the goal difference. It basically is six. We're getting there, guys. It wasn't maybe quite as uh, as relaxing as it could have been this afternoon, um, given the way the second half went in the end. But Celtic have won again, John, and it, it feels good. We're just getting closer and closer. Yeah, I don't think today was ever going to be about silky football. I think there was two sides to the Celtic performance today. In the first half, I thought there was pretty good attacking combinations. I thought Jota and Kyogo looked back to their kind of combinations that we kind of saw in the first half of the season. Second half was just a, a bit more about defensive resilience. I thought Cameron Carter Vickers was had a had yeah. a good second half. I thought Greg Taylor had a good second half. You know, I, I think although it felt a little nervous for us supporters watching on, as it naturally would. I think if you look at the performance, you'll see that Celtic were pretty comfortable throughout and, and didn't really concede a lot of chances to Ross County. I, I know it was probably a little bit tighter than people would have liked. I know we missed a few tan chances, but I think that's a, a good performance to get us on the way to you know this this end of season title charge. Well, let's cross over our, our reporter of all things apprehension over there on the right hand side, Stevie. How are you this afternoon? Who's that? Who's that? You're on of it. <laughs> I'm I'm good. I'm far better, and it was a horrible week. I just wished we were playing far sooner than half two on a Sunday. But feels really good to get the three points. Feels good to be celebrating a Celtic win like that. And John's right. We saw two sides of Celtic. We were so fluent in the first half, and we were looking as if we could have scored at any point. Just poor finishing stops have been a, an absolute riot in the first half. Second half, it was a wee bit more. I wouldn't say backs to the wall, but we had to be sort of air on the side of caution a wee bit and it wasn't as smooth as what we saw in the first half there was a lot of factors in that but ultimately the team dug it out and they stayed strong and that was all we wanted wasn't it and it was just good to get the clincher um, right at the end there the scenes were amazing Yeah. and shout out to the fans that all yeah. game they were just brilliant so they were well that's where I want to actually start because usually we start with you know the start of the match but I thought even in the lead up to the start of the match the, the support were incredible the, the sky cameras were on them for about five minutes before kick off they were singing, you know, they were on top of the league song, probably about nine, ten, eleven renditions of it. And I really felt it set the tone for a really fast start from Celtic. I thought it was a really strong start right from kickoff. We went forward the ball with the ball, showed, showed real intent. We obviously get quite a, a, a relatively early goal. And I just thought in general in that first half, you look around the team and basically everyone, you know, added something to that game. Um, I thought Kyogo coming in, I was probably guilty of actually forgetting just how good a player Kyogo was. I mean, Yakimakis is great, brilliant. He's probably my favourite player at the moment. Maida's brilliant as well, but no one controls the ball as well as Kyogo in that final third. His first touch was immaculate at times today. His work rate, obviously his header as well. Um, it was just great to see him back, John. And, and once again, scoring a huge goal for Celtic. I mean, a massive goal today. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, like I kind of alluded to there, like... Jota and Kyogo scored in the goals today and they've kind of been not not bit bad, but Kyogo has has been a kinda of on the sidelines for so long. It's easy it's, it is easy to forget how good they are. But when the team was announced that it's feeling good because you're looking at it and you're thinking, listen, our best player at the club is starting today for the first time in four months. That should give Rousey. anyone conf, com, <laughs> that should give anyone confidence as securing a result. Um, and I thought, yeah, you're right. I thought Kyogo was good. You know, the way he comes deep for the ball, you, you yep. forget that he, he does that. And Jack Amak is a totally different type of player. It kind of sticks to him. Um, it's, it's played longer up to him. But Kyogo comes deep for it. He's trying to make things happen. He, he's, he's quite a creative player as well as obviously having that, that end product. I mean, the header was magnificent. I mean, he's not he's not a big, tall guy. It's not like He's not tall like yourself, Hamish, but he's, um, he's probably a better header of the ball. Uh, let's mm. put it that way. You're looking at a guy who once got bullied in the air from Alex Ray, so I've, I've got nothing really going on. That was in a, a charity game that I mentioned a few weeks ago. It's an underrated part of his game, though, isn't it? I mean, his header, he scored probably three or four, five headers this season. I remember one at Dundee that was very Larson-like. That one was, was very Larson-like. It was funny because right before the, the goal, I think a couple of minutes before, Sky had the graphic up about crosses going into the box, and Andy Walker miraculously made a comment that proved to, you know, actually take place a couple of minutes later when he said that you don't need tall players in the box, you just need good deliveries. And then the ball in from Jota and the, the header from Kyogo was brilliant. Um, 
after that, you know, the other thing I maybe forgot, Stevie, was that as much as we love him, he does actually miss some chances as well. And he could probably have had a hat trick in that first half, Kyogo. Yeah, and he's always been like that, isn't he? And that's something, you know, he will have to improve on. It's partly his game. He doesn't need me to tell him that, of course. But, I mean, it was a bad miss. A wee bit of credit goes to the goalkeeper, but really he's got a... I just thought, had he had a run in the team, maybe played about three or four more games and was completely match fit, then that's going in. He's opening up his body, he's putting it on the other side of laid law. But yeah, it, if that goes in before half time, Ross County, they're never coming back for the wee spell that we saw in the second half. We are probably on easy street, but we like to do things the hard way at times, don't we? There was one off the bar as well, and John, was there a goal as well that was wrongly ruled offside, potentially? Yeah, it was, it was a weird one because, like, the, the, when it was when it first happened, it didn't look offside. Then, when I first saw the replay, it, it looked offside. Then, when I, I saw a replay again for the second time, you can see the defender's foot kind of playing Kyogo onside. Um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, he, he finished it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but just uh, another interesting day uh, on that front. But Celtic were in full control at half time. I had no concerns at half time. It was only after the half where that bit of natural tension that I spoke mm. to Ange about during the week, the natural tension and excitement of getting so close to this prize where it all kind of started to feel like, like that. I felt like Celtic did lose composure in the match, specifically in, in the midfield area. Um, Ange made the changes and then I, I do think we, we grew back into the game again and I wasn't overly concerned in those final 10 minutes, you know, aside from the odd corner conceded. Because you know that's as Stevie said to me before the game. That's where their their strengths of of way this season is in their set pieces. But mm. but Celtic saw the the game out very professionally and um, a very good job well done. Stevie, who else in impressed you in that first half? I thought Maeda and Jota both in the first half were excellent. I think they were causing Ross County so many problems. And their movement was terrific. They were interchanging as well. Um, out in the right and out in the left, I thought the three of them as a trio were excellent. So I did. Um, and I thought like every time we were going forward, Matt O'Reilly was excellent in the first half too, I felt. And yeah, every time we were going forward, Ross County just didn't look like they had anything, any idea how to cope with us. See the way that we pray. I mean, when we're set up, not against Rangers, but we, the way we press against teams like, you know, the, the rest in the SPFL, they force them into mistakes and they're constantly giving the ball away and that the pressing in the first half was excellent so it was and I didn't think we were going to be able to continue it in the second because it was a, you know, the amount of energy that would take out the players um, is apparent but that first half I thought the three of them and Matt O'Reilly were impressive to watch. They were always going to have their moment in the second half, I think, Ross County. Because, um, I mean, they're a, they're a decent enough side with decent attackers. I think Carter Vickers had a really, really good block 53 minutes, goal-saving block for me. I think it was from hmm. Peyton, from memory. They had a couple other wee chances as well, John, a couple of crosses into the box. Probably the kind of game that, again, I think you made made this point already, when you rewatch it, we were probably in more control than it felt at the time. I, I would say that. I, th I felt like the, the defence of four, all four of them, thought made good decisions today. You know, ju Not just in the, the timing of their challenges or the timing of the blocks or... Or interception, but just in in terms of their, their passing, I thought, I thought the the issues in terms of retaining the ball today came in the midfield. It wasn't from the defence, which has probably not been the case for a lot of the season. Um, and I was very impressed with all of them. You know, as I said, I thought Greg Taylor was one of our best players today. I know, I know, I'm a bit of a Greg Taylor fan on this channel, but I do. How, think how was how was it to meet him the other day? Were you a wee bit nervous Me, meeting no, your, no, the love of your life like that? In all seriousness, I think I think he's. A wee battler now, and I think we need yeah. battlers in that team at the moment. I think it's crucial, especially when we're playing away from home, that we've got someone like that. He's been around the league, he knows exactly how to play in all these stadiums, all these environments. So, um, I'm a big fan of Greg Taylor today. I thought he helped us in that second half massively. Um, yeah, uh, we'll get the, the Mazar take because it's always full of brilliance. A yeah, great result today. Thought Jota was superb, that assist was unreal. Special mention to Taylor, thought he handled uh, Charles Cook and Hungbo very well. There'll be some sad bears tonight, you'd think. Uh, seven to go. And the other one I want to get in a wee question for you, Stevie, if I can find it. Um, it was basically to do with uh, how your heart rate was. There we go. How was your heart rate in the last 15 to 20 minutes? Well, it was a bit more improved because I didn't have a Red Bull during the game. So that was all right. But no, it was 
I think as John says, if I have to rewatch bits of that game again, I'd probably be, you know, taking the point that Joe Hart didn't actually have a save to make. Yeah. And they never created much, but I think it's just because of those chances you missed in the first half and the way that we didn't really find a rhythm and we weren't playing our own natural game in the second half and the way that the stop-start nature of the game was really sort of helping Ross County more than us and, you know, at Clancy was just breaking that game up time and time again and just in the back of your mind you're thinking there's going to be something horrible here because we didn't actually put the game to bed and yeah, I was a wee bit sort of stressed out, but... What gave me so sort of, what I did like was that the the subs that the manager made. I liked that he didn't you know give Hitati like the, the full ninety like you know last week Hitati should have been coming off sixty minutes even sooner than that. But I liked that the manager actually identified the the team well needing freshened up and he made the changes and that was good. And I think as well that when you've got a guy like CCV at the back, he's just oh, so he's assured, doesn't he? He gives he actually gives me so much confidence because every time I saw him. Yeah, all, all you got for Ross County was just going to be a long diagonal, same as what another certain team do that I never criticise, just constant long balls and bombarding us. And no matter what, CCV's there just to mop up every time. I thought he was in P-Race, Greg Taylor as well. And the longer the game went on, and they two were looking, the, the two of them were, they were actually grown into the game even more, and they were clearing everything, and I was getting a lot of confidence for that. And then it was in the last 10 that I started thinking we were going to get a second, and we did. But yeah, it was great. After the week, it's been... You're just wanting to see Celtic as soon as possible, and yeah. it's just it, it's so I'm so so happy that we've got a result out of that at the end of the day, and the team were really prepared for it because the two goals again, like the three in March, they all came from crosses. That's a big weakness with Ross County, and right, right again today we scored through the crosses. So the team have done the homework, and they deserve a lot of credit for that today. It was a battle, but we deserved the three points. Hamish, as long-term viewers of the channel will know. You are the the king of knowing when a team's bottle has crashed and when it hasn't. <laughs> but what, can we can we just address that a little bit? I, I want to hear your thoughts on it because there's been a lot of garbage this week about Celtic's mentality and their bottle. And it was I I think it was unfounded given the way how they've performed in the league so far this season. What's your take on all the noise around Celtic this week and what today was? I think there's just a lot of frustration um, last week. Um, I think Celtic have responded well to setbacks this season. I, I think the one thing you can look at the team is they, they very rarely go two games without a win. It's usually if we get that poor result, we come back the next game and, and get a reaction. I think that's just down to Callum McGregor, it's down to Ange, it's down to the, the hunger the team have to, to prove people wrong. And I thought we'd see that today. Um, I thought we'd win more convincingly today, actually. You know, arguably, if we'd scored those chances in the first half, we'd have been looking at a more convincing victory. But I really wasn't surprised at all to, to see Celtic coming back and, and winning this game today. And I think, you know, looking forward to next week, I think the team will probably be even more motivated for the game next week than they were today. Um, because I think they've got real, real professional pride um, and they want to be seen as the big dogs. And I think... There's almost two kind of strange things going on here. One is that winning the league, and that's always going to be the most important thing. And I think, you know, we can come on to this in a minute, but I think we are, I think today was a huge result in terms of that. I think we're now, mm. you know, in like such a strong place. I mean, we come come on to it in a minute. I think the second thing is this dominance over Rangers or, or, or the superiority over Rangers. And I think while a draw next week is probably a pretty good result for us in terms of where the league's at, I think this team will want to to beat Rangers next week and put Rangers back in their place and win three out of the five derbies rather than maybe losing three out of the five. So I think next week is when we'll really see, you know, Celtic reaction. Um, and, you know, I, I think we'll beat Rangers next week. I mean, I'm giving away my prediction early, but I just think I just I just think we're heading towards that. Whenever Celtic have had setbacks this season we've tended to react really well to them. And it's kind of just like gradually going up and then you have a wee bump and then you just go further up the next time. Um, so I think that's what we'll see. Um, just a special shout out to Anthony Rouse. And I thought he was he was really mm -hmm. good today. I thought he really you know brought a, a lot of aggression to our play, but controlled aggression as well. Perhaps that we missed last week a little bit at Hamden. So I'm, I'm quite, I'm not glad Janovic is missing, but I'm quite glad in a way that Ralston is going to be starting that game next week because I think he could be a really important player for, you know, get, getting into that lot um, next week. We haven't actually spoken about the second goal, John. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you spoke to Ange during the week and it's quite funny because he made the point of, you know, if it wasn't 
if you weren't going through this kind of difficult times, it wouldn't be worth the joy you feel. And it was almost mm -hmm. kind of symptomatic of, of that winning goal today because we had to go through the difficult, nervy times that Stevie spoke about there in the second half where you had wee worry in the back of your mind, could they get a draw out of this? And then we got that amazing moment at the end of the game and that clinching second goal. I thought Jota was good throughout the game today. Um, and obviously he has that hunger to, to get the goal at the end. I think there's been a lot of, I wouldn't say knee jerk, and I, I know that Jota has, has, has had difficult games against Rangers this season, and particularly, I think that's maybe the one thing you would say about his season as a whole. But he's still been contributing over the last couple of months. Pataudry, you know, he's been still been assisting plenty of goals. Again today, set up the the Kyogo header, and 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 gets gets the goal in the end too. So. I think there's been a lot of a noise and criticism around Jota, and I don't think all of it's been earned. Um, but I think he'll be delighted today that it kind of silences some of that um, at the moment. And I think, you know, fingers crossed, although he's not played great against Rangers so far this season, that next week could, could be another week for, for a guy like Jota as well. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a sense of, almost a sense of relief when that went in. You know, it, I, you know as I said, on Twitter, like, I, I wouldn't like to go to Alton Towers with Ange Postacoglu, but it might just be because he's taken us to Disneyland instead. Try, I'm trying to get that one. Are you getting that one, Stevie? There's a lot that John says with his analogies that just go right over my head, but I believe what he's getting at is, what he's getting at is that we're going somewhere even better than we imagined with this wonderful manager. Is that right, John? Yeah, and I was also playing into Ange's roller coaster analogy during the week. Yeah, but but the, but the the point is that it's going to be nervous and it's going to be um, there's going to be ups and downs. But I think ultimately, I think this team want to bring us along to to a special place with them, and we'll see how that manifests next season. Because you know, I do think there is levels for this team to go, as as Ange has spoken about. But I think winning the title in this first season would be extraordinary, given from where we were last year. I really do think. I know, I know it's been talked about so much, but I think even by the end, it, it's it's almost underrated from from the state where we're in for Ange to build a title winning team against the Rangers who are performing so well in Europe against top sides, I, th I think would be quite the achievement. And I, and I think, you know, it's probably time to talk about the big picture now. It's like that sets us up so well for, for the next four games today. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, you, you say there's more ups and downs to come. Do you think there's any more ups and downs to come this season? Because, you know, mm -hmm. there may well be, but I think Celtic are in a, a wonderful position. Let's just show you the league table. Um, now, Hearts and Dundee United are playing at the moment. I've not included um, that game, but it's not very relevant to the title race. That's where Celtic are. We're six points clear with four games to go. We're 19 goals better off than Rangers. So we need seven more points to get on to 92. They can only get on to 91. Of course, that massive advantage in the goal difference means that 91 points will be good enough for us. So we're looking at two wins from our final four games, guys. Three of them are at Celtic Park against Rangers, Hearts and Motherwell. We've also got to go away to Dundee United. I mean, you avoid defeat next week against Rangers and it's over. And even... If the mm -hmm. worst was to happen next week, and we obviously really hope it doesn't, I would love to see Celtic beating Rangers. Even if the worst happened and we lost next week, you're still looking at two wins from Hearts, Dundee United and Motherwell, and we'll still be champions. So we're in an amazing place. Look, we've been talking about the title push and, and the different scenarios on the channel and the website for, for a while, and some might say it's premature. Everyone wants to say it's one game at a time. And that's true, it is one game at a time, but it just so happens now the next game is so decisive because if we win next week, the league is essentially won. Like, yeah. I know it's not technically won if we win it next is week, so, yeah. but if we if we win next week, the league is won. So yeah. um, you can say take it a game at a time all you like, but the, the fact is that the game at a time this time is the one that could ultimately clinch the league. So um, it's a very exciting week and I, I think Celtic should relish the challenge. Stevie, how are you feeling ahead of that one? Yeah, better. It'll be better because, you know, of today's result and that would be taking so much pressure off the team and a lot of the fans as well getting into that one. And I think we'll be preparing for it as professionally as possible as well. I think we'll learn lessons from the game at Hamden too and we'll know what type of performance to expect from Rangers after they've been playing in Europe. So 
Um, again, I say getting into this one, I was very confident after your press conference on Friday with the manager. I like what I heard, what he said. Greg Taylor too. There's just such a real positive mood around the team. And it just seems like the manager and the team last week, you know, were ultra-focused and they didn't let that, what happened at Hamden, get them down, unlike uh, certain people, maybe on this channel, we'll never know. And I think, <laughs> shut it, Hamish, and I do think... <laughs> <laughs> and I think for the game on Sunday, I'm going to be feeling far more confident after today. It's going to be tough, John, and yeah, I think we have to acknowledge it's going to be a really difficult game. But we'll learn a lot from the playing the last time against them as well. And I'm very confident that Ange eh, will know how to combat that for next time. I mean, John, that, this is suddenly kind of approached us now. And a, a week from now, as you say, beat Rangers at home with 99% of the crowd supporting us. And we're basically champions. I mean, it, it could happen very quickly now. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. I, I just think, I mean, even if you look at the team, the last time we played Ross County, it was totally different to the one that we saw today. Um, it's been a strange season. I just had to use players from the fringes of Celtic that you, you wouldn't have expected that we had to rely on. Uh, you know, we did, have a, we did have a slight COVID issue over Christmas again. Um, we've had injuries, we've had issues, we've had setbacks in Europe, we've had good results in Europe too, uh, in the group stages of Europa League. We've got nine points there, I think people forget that. I know it ended pretty grimly against Bodo Glimt in the, in the Conference League. But yeah, I think it has been up and down along the way. But it does, it does feel like we're at the finishing line now. And I really just think it's about a stretch to get over the line. I don't think it's... You know, I think it's obviously the, the team need to perform, but I don't, I don't think they need to perform... You know, beyond any capability that they've, you know, not already shown this season, and that is what I keep saying. Like that's why, you know, there was a sense of confidence this week because the team went. I've been on a massive unbeaten streak in this Premiership, and it's mm. unthinkable to think that they were going to. I think this, this, all this talk about collapse, and there was some nonsense in the paper today about helicopter Sunday and all this garbage, and I just think, you know. Obviously, people in the media need to create talking points, but I also just think it's a lot of irrelevant noise for Ange and his team. I think he's made that quite clear in the media himself, and I think Greg Taylor made it quite clear on Friday, and I'm sure whatever players speak publicly over the next seven days will make that quite clear as well. Celtic have been dealing with pressure all season, um, and I don't think that there's any more pressure on them now than there has been. Um, and I think, you know, win, lose, or draw against Rangers next week, I think we're going to win the league. Yeah, it's just an amazing position we're in and it's a position we're in because of the hard work we've put in this season, Stevie. Yeah, definitely. And I think the reason too is I, I, I never expected us to be in this position. You know, a lot of people say at the start of the season, if you gave me this and that, but even, you know, in the December period, I expected us just to be, you know, challenging Rangers at this point and, you know, just maybe laying a glove on them was the expectation after what we went through in December. I didn't see them dropping a lot of points and I started to believe January onwards that I think this team might have the makings of being a title winning team. They developed a real steeliness to them as well as being able to play good football and they've been able to combine and mix it up this season. And it's just an amazing position to be in. I genuinely never expected this and I think that's why they know the nervousness is hitting me because it's starting to believe so much that we could do it and now it looks like we can and we're going to and it's just a case of focusing and I know that we have got you know the, we've got to look ahead to the, to the games that are coming up and everything but I'm still thoroughly just one game at a time I'm not going to change focus is it was getting into this game against Ross County I heard people talking about the Rangers game next weekend I couldn't have cared less it's all about the game at Dingwall now moves on to the game against Rangers at Celtic Park then after that it will be Hearts and I'm not going to be Stay in the office again in case I get uh, bodied. But that's my general sort of train of th uh, thought with this now. And delighted with the team I really am after today, Hamish. Go on. No, I just, and again, the mood's going to shift. And, and I have felt, not just from Stevie, but from a lot of other people, that there has been a tension this week. I think there was a tension before the semi final as well. Um, and I, I think that that result did, you know, cause an effect on, on the support, not on the team. Um, and I think but the mood, the mood around us and the, the mood around how we feel about Celtic will also change this week. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the optimism again because I think this season's partly been built on a lot of optimism and hope. Um, and I think, you know, when you, you suffer a result like last week, 
it dents your confidence a little bit. But I don't think there's anything wrong with having confidence in this team. I don't think there's anything wrong with having confidence in this manager. And I think he'll prove that between now and the end of the season and we'll all have a happy summer. Yeah, I agree with that. And we've got another big week to look forward to, guys, as we look ahead to, to next Sunday. It's a game that, again, Celtic have a massive opportunity in. Similar to Ibrox in a way, I think, but now we're just, you know, that bit closer to the, the, the finishing line and, you know, victory, the league's done, draw, league's pretty much done. I think we'd need three more points at that stage. Um, and even if the result doesn't go against us, it's still going to be in our hands at that stage. So, yeah, we've we've really got a massive result today, I think, as much as Celtic can probably play even better than that and certainly be more ruthless and more comfortable in the game. Today might be the kind of game we look back on at the end of the season, which isn't far away as, as being a massive one. Um, thanks, guys. Unless you get anything else you want to add, just interrupt me right now. No? We'll move on. No, thank you. We did interrupt me there, but nothing else to add. Thanks, guys. We'll have more on 67heelheel.com as well. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, loads planned in the next week ahead of the Derby as well. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your Sunday. Take care and hail, hail.